early game impact jungler you would like to see from Broxa? I mean, Broxa plays Lee Sin. Is it the right call? Because Lee Sin is one of the most talked about junglers at the moment. I mean, you are most playing... see what Bin decides to run into this one. It will be the Ooh. Jax into the Volley Bay. All right here. Okay, Jax, they have the side lane threat too. Jax plus Galio, really powerful inside, similar to the Camille in the sense of Jax should always be able to power through on those side lanes. But of course, when you look at the impact in the team fight, the combo is not going to be there. Galio is going to be looking to sync up with his Leona when jumping into the back line a little bit more in that combination. But Sooning very clearly laying down the gauntlet here. They're going to try and break you through bot lane early on. Galio on lock at level six. And then if if they're not able to quite close the game, if the team fights look a little bit grim, Jax in a side lane will unlock. It's going to be interesting to see how the early game plays out with all the strength and the power in the bottom lane for Sooning. But then, of course, with the Lee Sin and maybe a little bit more pressure on Team Liquid to make those early plays happen and make sure Tactical is safe while doing so. And pressure on Broxa, because he did play his Lee Sin during play-ins, but didn't have the level of early game impact we would have liked to see. Later on in the team fights, he was great, landed some big kicks, don't get me wrong. But in this game, playing around mid lane early on, making sure you can bail out bot lane, because it is very clear right from the start when you see a Draven with Hail of Blades, with an Ignite and a Heal versus a Cleanse and Exhaust Twitch in the bottom lane, yes. who is going to be winning? Absolutely the case, and of course, uh, uh, Galio with Predator once again in the mid lane. This is a pick we're seeing more and more coming through fruition. Minions and uh, it more signals that parties on the side lanes. Let's see where SOFM plays, what pathing he's going to do. Again, historically, he's trended more towards Bin's lane, but in this matchup, maybe you want to help out Juan Fun. Yes, SOFM already setting up for that level one invade. There's a ward that will spot them out. They have they have sweepers, so they should be able to spot that. Actually, it's placed just, nope, they are going to see that one. And now Lee Sin will have to head on out of here. Team Liquid actually sticking around, but I don't like this fight. They're not, they're not going to commit to it. Backing away, Blast Cone was taken there by Broxa. He's going to move up. Ward placed on uh, the Brambleback. Trevor, Trevor, get ready. Because yes. SOFM is going to live inside of Broxa jungle. And if I'm talking about SOFM and I sound super excited, it's because I am. Because I, I don't think you can convince me that anyone has spent more time thinking about League of Legends than this man in the jungle. When you look at his builds, like the Knight's Vow, like he's always doing crazy things that at a glance look kind of crazy. But then it's like, okay, Lee Sin, what do you actually have to offer? Well, with Knight's Vow and Spirit Visage, you're unkillable. Your healing is going to be ridiculous. Ridiculous, but also in his early game pathing, he's an incredibly efficient jungler. He'll forget about dragons, he'll forget about heralds. It's about making sure he can come ahead and through counter jungling as well, get an advantage over his opponent. With this level of one invade, you might say, well, he's not getting a big lead because Brox is taking all of his topside camps. Well, Brox has spent a lot of time running to that topside, but the big win is that now SOFM is playing with the split map and to make sure Huan Feng and Sword Art are safe. You can see Huan Feng and Sword Art pushing very deep. If Hello. If toss happens, yeah, Bin's gonna flash forward for impact. Counter flash to stay alive. Don't want to keep fighting into the minion wave. Yeah, but this trade is really bad for Bin because there's Lee Sin on his top side. He knows SOFM is bought, and both these players are level one. Broxa looks for the gank. Here comes Broxa. He's gonna help out Impact. He's gonna drop some lightning. Bin's gonna continue to run. While that's happening, there's an engage in the bottom lane. 
Zenith Blade will find its target, but Tactical and Cordia Jet losing all these minions without uh, losing Summoner, but they're losing XP. You forget losing the farm. Summoners, it doesn't matter. Like, it's 19 to 6 in the minions, but worse than that, Tactical is not getting the experience from those minions. It's not just the gold differential. This next wave will be denied as well. And this is where you start thinking, is Bin, you know, making a bad trade by using his Flash top lane, or is he just baiting Brock to just spend more and more time around that side of the map? Because it is absolutely doomed for Tactical. This is 21 CS to 6. The mini wave is continuing to be de denied to Tactical, finally making it back into the lane. We'll pop out of the ambush in just a second. Yeah, but it's the fake pressure kings from Sooning because SOFM left a while ago. You know, this pop forward isn't going to matter. The trade back with the Hail of Blades, a little bit too good here. But SOFM, he can pretend he's in the fog because he knows there is no vision for TL. And in under four minutes, Sooning have finished off two turret plates. That is disgusting. Oh, Zenith Blade will catch out Core JJ. He's going to be forced to use the exhaust and dash away. Sordot again. So much pressure. This Leona pick is pushing Team Liquid to the brink. And Sordot knows exactly what he can get out of this champion, too, because he didn't use his Ignite right there. He's holding on to that one, making sure that he will only want to use that to finish off a kill. Now the question for SOFM is because now that the Raptors and Krugs have respawned, at least since still stranded on the top side of the map, SOFM could look to continue the invade and take away some of those camps. But I do believe he counter jungled at least the Raptor camp, so that wasn't actually a respawn, if I uh, remember that correctly. He will be pathing over to the area again and could potentially set up a dive, although with low mana on Leona, might be a little bit. What a phenomenal start to the game from Sooning. Now, Impact is going to try to get some damage down onto Bin. No flashes to continue the chase and minions to deal with. But crystal clear game plan. Draven locked in with Leona. You've got the early game Impact from Nidalee. Just hold Huan Feng's hand. Make sure he gets the advantage. Now, it is slowly equalizing, but there's still an advantage to Sooning. So, Brox is coming down here, but mid lane's the big difference because Angel just TP back to lane. He has Predator Boots and has them upgraded. Jensen with no mana is stuck there. So, yes, Broxa will get into the jungle. He had double long swords, so he's able to push SOFM out of there. But can Angel find a play around the map? He was trying to actually sprint towards the top side, but he walks over Ward. This is a really cool play from Angel because as soon as you see Lee Sin down there, top lane is vulnerable. And what, Impact's still fighting. He Inside saw this guy running for 30 seconds. Now, no access to the ultimate. No flash available either, but neither do Bin and Angel. Counter-Strike will be able to land the stun as well as the taunt. Impact dies for first blood. Jensen completes the TP. He's looking for the Unleashed Power. Will land it onto Bin, but he won't find the kill just yet. Dark Sphere finally picks it up. One for one, but they lost the TP. Yeah, Jensen's calling that he can come in on the teleport, so we'll be happy with that trade. And it looks like junglers will take mid farm, mid laners will take top farm on that one. So it doesn't end up being the worst thing in the world for Team Liquid, but I think if I was TL, I would prefer just to not let the kills go down in the first place. The thing that I loved, Endo, is we were highlighting the fact that Broxa showed bottom lane, and Angel was out of the lane instantly. He's actually been pushing into Jensen uh, for most of this early game. And the fact that he had the ability to shove that wave in and then start roaming allowed him to set up at least the first blood onto impact. I didn't quite see whether he knew that it was coming. I didn't see if there was a ping from the TL side. They had the vision. They had they, the they, they had to know he was on he the way. Brox the kill. We'll follow it through. Angel not going to land the taunt. Javelin toss split between impact and Jensen. The Scuttlecraft. <laughs> 6v6 now for the Scuttlecraft. Being fought over. I keep looking at the minimap just in case anything <laughs> happens. One Fang and Sora, they can still play, but it'll end up going Suiting's way. Yeah, ooh, SFM takes over to level six as well, and oh come on. I was I was waiting I was waiting for the invade on that one. Meanwhile, bot side, it is a uh, big diffy. Uh, 20 CS already. Good news is there's no ultimate on Angel. He used that one in the top line, top lane, to try and keep been alive, so they won't be able to come in on that, but SFM maintains his presence inside the Team Liquid jungle. Angel has pressure, just like you were saying, Trevor, as this red buff respawns, so they can either go for the red buff, or I'd rather see them deny more waves in the bot lane, deny the plates as well, and just like, this is again, SFM doesn't have to gank bot lane to make Tactical lose out. He is farming the camp, but because there's no vision in the TL jungle, well, Tactical is completely screwed. Yo, I need to call Frostgur now. She said there was no mechanic to deny farm. Sooning, send their regards. There is a mechanic. Wait, it is okay, Blaster. Trevor, that was taken Blaster. grossly out of miscontact, <laughs> out of context. She said that counter jungling was the way to do it. That's exactly what they're doing, Trevor. It's just phenomenal, and it is beautiful to see in action. It is equating to a 20 CS difference. Vamp Scepter to BF Sword. Now, I do want to give some credit here to Team Liquid. They are paying 
as much respect as they need to. They are in a difficult situation. But Broxer has not found an impact. Twitch has not found the farm. But they haven't died more than they needed to. Trevor, Trevor, here's the thing, though, is that look at jungle and look at ball. Yep. It is 20 plus CS, or roughly 20 CS in those two areas. And Team Liquid's only way to break bot lane was to play through Jensen early on. Try to punish a Galio, which can be difficult, I give them that. But because of the way the map was split at level 1, the wards weren't able to spot that out. Like, I, I, maybe Team Liquid, they have to bring impact down at level 1 and take that 5 versus 4. Maybe that's the only way to prevent the map from being split. But because the map was split and there was no pressure put towards mid, going top lane over and over does nothing to save their bot side. Doesn't right now. Ben's going to use that Grandmaster's Might. Will be forced to flash away after Broxer jumps into the Sonic Wave. Looking at the minimap, SOFM's making his way up here as well. And Ben, no ultimate, Ben can still land the Counter Strike if he wants to. And this is why I was saying, like, Jensen, you know, calling the teleport trade for the 1 for 1 kill on top side wasn't super beneficial to Team Liquid because they don't have that to force anything around bottom lane. And He's now trying to set up the wave so he can hold it in front of his tower, but I think holding the wave in front of your tower is losing because Angel has ultimate. He's just going to pop on bot lane right here. Seems to be the case. Sordot's got access to the solar flare. There's a dive being set up. Again, look at the number of minions that are being denied. Tactical, forced to cleanse, forced to flash. Core JJ doing the same. He's running away. Winds of War may just be enough to do the tick, to do the kill, to do the damage. Core JJ is down. Sooning find their kill. Deny another two and a bit waves of minions. 81 to 58. There's a bit of a diffy in the bottom lane. Ooh, that Ouch. Too. Yep. I mean, uh, SOFM has also uh, uh, already completed. His Rune Gekko has already got a significant advantage. And now it's the blue buff invade as Jensen will be walking over, but the blue buff is taken away and Jensen are tactically stuck underneath the tower. Juan Fung will get the cash in 523 on that one. We waited 10 minutes for it, Sooning have it, and now it is almost a 4,000 gold lead. That is a clinic. There needs to be new chapters written to how to play the early game. I I'm just, I'm freaking out. Why are we still running into bot lane? You have to take the Herald swap in this situation. You can't continue to walk into the two versus two. And honestly, I think Sooning would be well off to now reset, put their dual lane towards the top side as well with the Herald going down. But if SOFM isn't going to be contested, you don't even have to do that. Let Sword Art start walking up there and then they can continue to play. But because we're only 11 minutes in, I think the right play is to now get Draven out of the bot lane because there's turret plates at play. They can look for 10 plus plates here with the Rift Herald. There's an infinity edge in the game already. 10 and a half minutes, one kill, 90 CS, one assist. One Fung is, I mean, he's just built to take over this entire game. And the strategy was crystal, crystal clear. It was predicted by multiple analysts on this very show. It was show. predicted before draft, it was predicted yes. after draft, it was predicted at level one. And the thing that I love is that it was executed on exceptionally well. And it's beautiful League of Legends to watch. Now let's put ourselves in Team Liquid's shoes. This is an unenviable position. Draven with IE at 11 minutes versus a Cutlass. But if they were to find a way back in, is it just Brox or Jensen finding that magical pick? I, I mean, I don't think at this point one pick is going to do it, Trevor. That's the uh, unfortunate reality we're in. The the only thing, and I spoke about this in draft, was that eventually Tactical outscales a lot of the champions on Sooning's side. You know, in, in terms of range, he'll beat the Draven. Leona won't be able to re reliably reach him. But this is why Sooning's draft is so genius, is because everything is built not just to get Draven ahead, but to actually shut down Tactical. This is not Draven, you know, just last hitting better for 30 CS. This is Tactical being denied waves and waves under the tower. It's a two-level difference in the bottom lane, and that's what's going to be hard to recoup. And not only two levels, and it's 2,200 gold difference as well between the two of them. That's the scale that... Team Liquid have to overcome. And it's going to be exceptionally difficult. There's a stun there onto Angel. 49 seconds until the Mountain Drake. Sooning as a team actually do not prioritize Dragons a lot um, when coming from the LPL. They've got the second highest Baron percentage. And um, I think they're eighth or ninth when it comes to Dragon control. Very, very low down in the stats. But when you've got this significant advantage and a Draven and a yeah. Leona, they're gifted, right? Yeah. They're, they're, they're freebies and they are being taken. Yeah, this bot lane tower, they're going to play for this one first. Galio already on the rotation. Jensen stranded in mid lane, even with the teleport. 
TL are trying to hold onto the tower. There's still plates on, so it is a little bit more difficult for it to be taken down. There's some missing pings there on Ben's head as he was first to leave the lane. He was shoving it in. If Team Liquid stick around, we can see that Angel is waiting. They're looking for the opportunity. Suninger just looking. He's on a ward this whole time. Just looking for the opportunity to push this even further. 4,000 gold at 13 minutes, half of it in Draven's hands, and this will be the uncontested dragon. But again, this is where I feel like you would see a lot of LPL teams kind of flip it in bot lane, because, like, how much stronger SOFM is, how much stronger their bot lane is, like, they would yeah. bring the Nidalee down to, like, force the dive really hard. SOFM says, nah, we can just take the dragon. Your guys are going to get the plate anyways. We see Brox this entire time, so eat that one up for free. Now he's going to go invade the Raptor camp as well, or even yet continue to force around this bottom side. Now we're 15 seconds away from plates falling, SOFM. Oh, I really wish I could have seen the Herald go down into the mid lane to cash in on those plates, but they will miss out on that, you know, 300 plus gold. The Hex Flash came over the wall there from Sword Art. He was looking for Core JJ, who was able to respond in time. Now the first 15 minutes of this game was outlined and painted beautifully for what Suning wanted to do. Let's take the next five to 10 minutes. Um, four and a half for the next uh, Dragon. We've seen them play very tempered, as you said. They didn't coin flip the tower dive. Yeah. They got the objective, they got the Dragon. Like, this is calculated play. Yeah, they got 960 gold off the plates in the bottom lane. And uh, with first items all completed too, like Suning are looking very, very powerful. I think that with this Rift Herald, I would like to see them use that in mid, but potentially with the dual lane playing around the top side of the map, we just see that get dropped up there early, then convert that into a blue buff invade, because all SOFM wants to do now is grow the gap in the jungle. You know, Broxa 000 hasn't been a detriment to TL, but SOFM now on the Nidalee with his first item completed, if you can just take away all these jungle camps, Brox is going to be bleeding. Tactical is going to go anywhere he can to try and find free farm, and uh, if you can try to pull him out of lane or put the pressure in the enemy jungle to force him away from these side lanes, that can be really powerful as well. There's going to be so much pressure to find free farm when you can see all the tools that Suning have to jump on you. If Tactical missteps or hangs around longer than he needs to, Suning will not pay the level of respect to Team Liquid that they have for the rest of this game. They've not overdived, they've not overchased, they've built up a fantastic advantage, and the Rift Herald will get. The boop onto the outer turret, and you can see Huan Feng and Sword Art now moving top lane. They're going to use this Eye Edge and BF Sword to push down the next tower. It's one to zero, and then th this is the huge pressure point. Anywhere Draven is, Team Liquid really don't want to be. Uh, yeah, you can't fight into clear. it. No, yeah, you yeah. can't. But they do keep throwing Tactical and Core JJ into the two versus two. I guess like that's their best form of wave clear to throw into a side lane. But Bin is now losing, you know, in the or Bin is now crushing in the one versus one. That's a not the opposite. The op it's opposite it's day. It's, opposite. it's the opposite day. I mean, yeah. Blade of the Rune King completed against Thrift Shopping, right? It just so. feels really bad because every matchup is is now winning for Team or for Suning. It's still opposite day, Trevor. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you know you'll get pressure, and SOFM will be able to walk in. But with this dual lane playing around topside, it is a little bit more challenging for SOFM to try and steal away camps from Broxo when he's playing away from that duo lane because it's a little bit harder to bring Sword Art around on the play, but it has slowed down just a tad for Sooning, and I think that we're going to be looking in the next few minutes for them to break down these outers and then really push the tower. Historically speaking, when teams generate this significant of a lead this early into a game, the risk associated with extending it further dramatically increases. Yeah, but usually... Sorry, it's just going to pop out of this one. Oh! oh Cancelled it. Going to be forced to flash. Good job, Core JJ. That's kind of sweet. Those small wins, we take yeah, those. What I was going to say is usually this gold lead comes with all three outer turrets being down, and that's where it's harder to actually break the, the next line of towers, and you only play for jungle camps. But because of, you know, it being a Draven, uh, getting that cash in on the bot side, as well as, the, you know, the, the early denial around the bottom lane, like, there's a 5,000 gold lead, and there's only been one tower taken. Yes. That is kind of scary, and that's why I'm waiting, like, I felt like something slowed it down a bit when they could have taken mid lane tower with the Herald or really forced around the top side. I mean, if you just take a look at the CS differences between SOFM and Broxa, you then start calculating some of the, the, the gold differences from Fun plus nearly 50 at the moment. Second Herald here will be able to be secured. There's zero content. I mean, Team Liquid can't fight. Even if, even if they wanted to, they simply cannot. Those spinning axes from Draven are going to do a lot of work. He's picked up a significant amount of CS since he picked up, uh, since he secured that kill a little while ago. So I'm anticipating um, a very big cash in from those stacks. And as you mentioned, Ender, slower pace of game. Ocean Drake up next. We're playing for Ocean Soul. And Baron will be up two and a half minutes. And with the amount of damage they've got, 
the ability to swap between. Team Liquid are really moving up here. They want to fight. No flash order. Very bold. So with them as the Javelin Toss holding on to it very patiently. Solar Flare comes down to Tactical Sword Arts going very, very low. Sidestep away as one fun is being exhausted and continues to Ooh. use the adrenaline to step back. Four members of Team Liquid arrive. And they're not able to speak Angel yet. is now here. How hard do Sunni want to go? Because Sword Art was taken exceptionally low. The last second heal to save him. Tactical was almost able to kill him with the expunge. So, uh, I mean, Team Liquid finally forcing around, yes. moving Broxa and Jensen into that dual lane. That was sort of the play we were waiting for for a very, very long time. It comes through and almost nets them a kill. Oh, man, so much damage from Ouch. Jax. Just stepping all the way forward. Does get chomped on. Stopped in his tracks, but if he gets another good combo, could continue the chase, does look for it. No Counter-Strike just yet, Ding's 13. And when you think about this matchup, like, all of Volbear's power, like, his abilities enhance his auto-attacks, right? So when Jax has Counter-Strike up, it's really hard for him to do anything other than toss up a knee and walk away until that ability does go down. Now Suning gonna find their third Ocean Dragon of the game. Not much that Team Liquid can do in this situation, but I do appreciate the fact that they put Team Tactical in the top lane because it's been really hard for him to find a free lane to farm, and now that Suning are grouped up around that objective, he can get the waves for free. But at what cost? Dragon secured, mid outer secured. Vin is leaving the bottom lane, potentially for a dive. Rift Herald yeah. used as well. So. Okay, yes, Tactical has got some farm, but look at the bigger picture is how much further the team could have Sooning are still winning, don't get me wrong, but there's oh, no yes. other option for TL because Tactical didn't have ult, it's just now coming back up. Core JJ lost it because they put everything onto Sword Art. They were always going to lose down here, so even the small wins, like that is just the only possible close to winning play TL have there. 6,000 gold the difference, three towers to one, and a dragon. Um, that is the net positive here for Sooning. If, uh, uh, Hourglass was just picked up there by Angel as he's backed away and spends a whole chunk of change. Can't quite see. Storm Rays is picked up now as well for Hong Fung. So 20 minutes in. Like, this is just beastly from Sooning. They've got four towers secured. I'm kind of scared to know how much gold Draven has. I'll ask our observer. <laughs> I'll see if we can find I'm kind of scared. Production, can you let us know the gold difference between Hong Fung and Tactical? We'll see uh, exactly what that will look like. I'm going to guess four grand. Three and a half, four grand. That's a lot. That's, that's I, yeah, I, I think about three and a half. Three, three and a half sounds about right. Maybe it's more. Oh, thank you. Oh, the vision, vision score. score. Thank okay. you. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that one. SOFM topping the charts. <laughs> um, so, uh, 20 minutes of SOFM game two. Do you still love him? Uh, I mean... Love's a strong word, Trevor. Do you love how he plays League of Legends? I, I do love how he plays League of Legends. That, that was a more face And, and yes. the Thinking Man's Jungler again, back with another uh, nice build. I, I really like Rod of Ages. I, I think it's been slept on, on the old Nidalee here, especially when you're super fed early on, because you get a lot of the stats you want to buy, and it's really hard, usually, for junglers to find items past, you know, two, three items, or past three items. So this is one of the, the better scaling options you can get early on. Gives you the mana, gives you the HP, makes you a little bit more of a brawler, so you can actually step forward in fights and against someone like a Syndra has pretty high burst damage. You're going to want that and a little bit of MR so she can't just take you down in one swoop. Also, the entire team composition of Suning wants to brawl and go forwards yeah. and be in your face. So definitely works out. I got a ping from our producers. 3,000 gold in the lead. Uh, Huan Feng over Tactical. That's the Draven over the Twitch. And you can see it. A couple of long swords, Blade of the Rune King. Those are two fully completed items. Trinity Force is almost coming in here for Bin as well. He's already been beating up on impacts. Yeah, we, we do need to check in on level difference because that's always going to be big. One in top lane for Suning, two in jungle, uh, two in bot lane. But Tact or Jensen rather has done a good job for himself matching levels with Bin, which can be a little bit difficult. There you have. He has 300 adoration. That's 625 gold as they find a pick on Core. He's going to be able to get away for now. With that battle dance. Fun gets stunned up. I think Jensen is somebody we've not had much chance to talk about. We wanted to see him teaming up with Brox or vice versa. And he has quietly been farming up an advantage. He has found a couple of stunts here and there. But the problem he's going to find is, can he burst? Can he get through the front line? The Galio, the Nidalee. You can only pick one target. And <laughs> frankly, if you blow on any of them, then Draven's just going to kill you. See, that's what I'm wondering is like, is Jensen's goal to actually kill front line or is it to somehow hope he can hit Quan Fong on, on this Draven, you know? Draven doesn't have an insane auto attack range, so it's not unrealistic for it to happen. And he isn't itemiz itemizing to MR anytime soon. But one of the great things about having Galio and a Nidalee is you have the heal from Nidalee, you have the ultimate, uh, 
uh, match damage shield yes. from Galio if he wants to use that onto his Draven. So the burst damage, even with a Spellbinder, has counter options from Sooning. And uh, don't forget, minute 15 seconds away from the Ocean Soul coming on to the Rift. And I'm not convinced TL will even look to fight over it. No, which I is crazy to think, because you always fight Ocean Soul. You have to. And also, statistically speaking, uh, Team Liquid and the LCS did that too. They conceded yeah. many of the early Drakes. They fought over the fourth one. Uh, they were not you know, down 9,000 gold yeah, most wow. of the time um, throughout the course of the summer season when that was happening. But you cannot give up Ocean Soul with Nidalee, Draven, Galio, with the, the, the team. Oh, they're just going to do Baron, it. sure. Forget, forget the Ocean Soul. That's what Team Liquid would expect you to do in 40 seconds. Soon you're just going for the for the Baron. And the attack speed Nidalee gives the Draven as well. Like, they can get through this pretty fast. Now, Kortje J is nearby. He's got Flash, Exhaust, Quickness available to him. Sooning start to back out. Impact will be a little late to the fight as the rest of Sooning already grouped up. They're going to peel away. So threaten, no teleports used, no abilities used. And Sooning just uh, testing the waters with Team Liquid, seeing how they react and how they respond. And they don't manage to find any advantage. Okay, so TL, I think they are going to try it. Tactical just got a rune on Surricane. I still think they are very much at the disadvantage here, but. This would be the opportunity if Broxa could come away with a steal here. I think that's better than a team fight for TL. Posture in, be able to find the vision, but at the end of the day, try not to commit to the 5 versus 5. If you can get the 50-50, that's ideal. Such a scary place to be. Can Jensen find one thing? It's not going to be easy. Sword Art stepping forward. Solar Flare's available to him. Angel's body blocking. And Fung is going to continue to hammer away with those spinning axes. Dragon will reset. Now core JJ. Stepping up, trying to get some vision in the pit. TL do have a ward inside the pit, which is going to be very valuable. And they're pressuring forward. It's down to 3,000 HP. Brought to once to get into the pit for a seal. It's low. He's going to go for the steal. Not going to be able to pick it up. Sooner get the Ocean Soul. The Whirling Death flies across Team Liquid. One Fung steps forward. Can't find the kill just yet because SOFM. That takes down Core JJ. Finally, Impact goes down. That Draven's hand. And despite a stun from Jensen, SOFM is going to try to thread the needle on that Javelin Toss. Pick up the chickens instead. As Jensen and Tactical escape with their lives, it was Sooning all day long. Yeah, SOFM clutch on the smite right there, and then they turn for the fight. Team Liquid had stepped forward inside of the river, and Sooning had the snap engaged. Jensen sticking around, because the only way you hold on this game is maybe a scatter of the week over the wall, but Ben is on the hunt. Yeah, Ben's going to be able to chase him down. If they spot him, I'm not sure if they fully aware. Can he do it? Hold your breath! Can he do it? Oh! oh! Jensen! What? How? When? That what a boss! Is ridiculous! There's nothing else you have in this. The Baron goes over to Sunni. Like, this game already feels completely over. The Baron is just the final nail in the coffin. Jensen with the burst damage coming over the wall and playing in the fog of war. Sunni did not know it was coming. How? I didn't know it was coming because the observers toggled the vision off. I didn't see how much HP Baron had until the animation popped up. Now, the question is how. Good does this Baron power play have to be for TL to pull it back? The game is still Sunix, don't yes. get me wrong, right? I understand that. Yeah, because again, like there's no team fight no. for Team Liquid here in the Axe replay. Sunix can just turn it around with the damage again. The only hope was the steal, I feel like, for TL. So as soon as that did not work out you for You said it sarcastically and it happened. Yeah. <laughs> It was at both times. All he can do is the steal, but Cinder unironically has insane burst damage. We've seen it happen so many times where you just unload all three spells at the same time over the wall and get the burst damage to knock that one down. And this is going to slow down the game dramatically. Baron would have ended the game for Sooning, and now we're playing likely for the Elder Dragon, which is insane to steal. Even better than stealing an Ocean Dragon, because the enemy team gets a soul, you get an Ocean, which is completely useless for Team Liquid at this point. In this case, now the only way to win a fight is you have Elder Dragon to get you that extra execute threshold to neutralize the gold advantage. Need those Dragon lasers. If Team Liquid can steal the Elder Dragon, then, then, we can start looking forward. It's one of these really bittersweet moments. On one hand, you're so happy and excited for Jensen, but there's still Mount Olympus that they have to climb. 10,000 gold difference through the Ocean Soul, and it's three minute timer for that elf. Trevor, what happened yesterday? Sooning had an Ocean Soul against G2. They lost, oh, they lost the game. They did by, uh, there's a replay, by the way, of this, uh, 
It's a sweet steal coming over the wall, using sweet. the blue trinket too. And I'm the not saying that this will happen again, no. but what I am saying is that in the minds of Sooning, this is all they can think after you lose a Baron in that situation. And like remember that. what Frascuro was saying on the analyst desk about the players on Sooning. There are a number of young players coming onto the international stage. Yes, they are flanked by veterans. Tactical's currently being flanked by Sooning. The rest of Team Liquid making their way up. Um, I do acknowledge the fact that, yes, there will be some mental pressure, right? But the advantage they've accrued, the way the game has played out, one miraculous steal will slow things down, as you've already highlighted. And in yesterday's game, I think the gold and the items were just a little yeah, bit more competitive. But Jensen, he was the guy. We just started talking about him. We haven't given him too much spotlight. Hello. So they're going to find one fun. So much damage coming out. He stays alive long enough for a few seconds. Scout of the week. Jensen's looking to be able to 900 to gold. Go. Gets 900 gold. Do you believe in miracles? Brox is trying to find Sword Art, and he simply cannot do it. One for one. But holy hell, is that a good one? Yeah, Team Liquid will take that one. But coming off this play, even in the four versus four, Sooning are going to be able to still maintain pressure on the map. So leading into this uh, Elder Dragon team, Liquid would love to be able to find some vision inside enemy territory. And now Tactical has no summoner. So he's going to come back. He'll try to get to an Infinity Edge for the next fight. But Ben is pushing button. They're looking for the pick. All right, Ben's going to get jumped on for now. Here comes the entrance. As Who's looking for who? He'll jump in. And that's a retreat from Impact. Sword Art, no Solar Flare available to him, but Zenith Blade could come up. Jensen steps forward, Ultimate's a few seconds away. He could look for the kill, but Angel Tactical's is going to be able to find the damage. Tactical is out. It's going to have to be on Jensen to do something magical. Chucks everything he has a bin, and it simply doesn't matter. 35 second death time. Tactical lost everything in the last fight, so Sooning continue to force Brock to his respawn, though, but Sooning still in the base looking for the inhibs. Angel is going to be able to thwart the follow up engage onto Bin. SOFM and the rest of Sooning will take out the bottom lane inhibitor. The middle lane inhibitor is exposed, and it's one minute to Elder. That's a knock-up onto Bin, and all of a sudden, Sooning are starting to retreat. That's the direction they're going. Thank you, Ender, for fixing it. The middle lane inhibitor will go down, and Sooning open the base after losing the hyper-fed Huan Fung. Tactical gets the kill, but Sooning get the base. They once again reaffirm and reestablish how dominant their lead is. Yeah, and we'll check out this pick one more time because it is really nice jumping onto Huanfang right here. He gets charmed up. All the gold goes to Tactical. But in order to stay alive, both the Flash and Cleanse, Yusu was punished in the bot lane. And this does not mean an Infinity Edge for the Elder Dragon fight. That is absolutely crucial because Huanfang already on three plus items with those, you know, the completions of the Last Whisper and the QSS here. And Tactical, no summoners, makes him a prime target for the dive of Sword Art and Angel. Yeah, and Ben's also just picked himself up a GA for this next potential fight. 11,000 gold difference. Jensen. Managed to steal a Baron, stall the game out just ever so slightly. Some damage on Sword, but look at that heal from SOFN. And yeah, so crucial though, TL have been able to re-enter their jungle, but Bin is pushing that bot wave. That's going to create the pressure, and Team Liquid don't have vision inside the pit. Do you believe in miracles? Because that is what Team Liquid need right now. They cannot get through their jungle. They cannot get into the pit. They can't do it. They cannot get close for a steal. Or JJ is going to dance his way out as Jensen will find at least a stun onto Sword Art. But Sooning with the Elder buff, Ocean Soul, Super Minions have all the tools they need. Frankly, they've had all the tools they need to win the game for a while. But this is what they need to close it out. I mean, they could go for the Baron if they wanted, but I think they're going to try to end the game with a team fight inside of the base right now. They have double supers pouring into the base. They're going to use this, and Team Liquid have one final chance to hold on to their Nexus. No summoners on tactical. Jensen has the flash available. Some damage landing onto Bin. Counter-Strike will dissuade further follow-up. Juan Fung steps forward, starts autoing the tower. That's a stun onto Tactical. He gets caught by Whirling Death, but isn't sentenced to it. Not going to find a Sonic Wave. Brox is not going to find the impact. Impact's not going to find the kill. He's blown up as Core JJ underneath the tower. A dash forward onto Tactical as Angel is on a rampage. Bin gets another, and Impact runs for his life. You cannot stop Draven from Sooning, and they take down Team Liquid. Sooning in that game, just from start to finish, the preparation, knowing exactly the counter they wanted into the Twitch and Rakan, dominating through the bot lane, did not give Tactical or Core JJ a chance. They split the map from level one and made this Draven an unkillable machine. Beautiful. It was fantastic. It was a beautiful game from Sooning. It was a beautiful steal from, from Jensen. It didn't ultimately impact the game. But 
If you didn't know, Suning, if you didn't know SOFM, watch this game. Go back and listen to the analyst desk. Listen to Ender in game. Listen to everyone in the LPL screaming his name because he is phenomenal. I mean, even the shout out there, Broxa building the Knights Vow against SOFM at the end there, seeing him start to make waves on the international stage. And for Team Liquid, there is, a, I mean, Jess Coach is a bit of a worrying trend, I'll say it, uh, here with the, some of the preparation. We saw all these top lane picks that Frost pointed out on uh, the analyst desk getting banned away from them. And then the one thing that's left open, they walk straight into with the Twitch and the Rakan. And all of a sudden, there's this entire early game strategy completely built at shutting them down. And of course, one Fung, he didn't play any Draven all summer. He played one game in spring, roll the dice, and you know, one Fung came in on top. Head to the hub on Spotify for all League of Legends action, all in one place.